Hello again. This is Richard. Um, it occurred to me before I really started diving into the grand campaign that I should talk more about myself and, and what I think I'm going to be able to do with this playthrough. What you should know is that I am a chess master. My strengths in the game are tied to calculation, tactics, end games, uh, and all kinds of general theory that makes me a, a very good player overall. Um, in this playthrough, uh, I think there's some elements missing from other players who have played this game. <clears throat> Deductor, I think, is the best tactician with this game that I have seen. Some really wild, crazy, adventurous stuff uh, that I will never be able to match. But that doesn't mean everything about his play is top-notch. I think a lot of people that play Panzer Corps make the mistake of assuming it is a tactical game exclusively. <coughs> and if I were to apply a percentage to how much of this game is tactical, it's probably somewhere between 70 and 80 percent. So, you know, clearly you should spend time studying tactics and learning how to use them properly. But I think if you really wanted to enter like next level play, you have to start thinking beyond tactics. Um, and there's a player that comes to mind who I think has excelled in so many different dimensions in this game. And he's called Bricotta on, on YouTube, and he's got many, many playthroughs of Panzer Corps. And, I, and I've learned a lot watching him play. He is very good at vision control and attack and defense. I will probably not be able to match his skill level in that regard. Ironically, in chess, uh, my biggest weaknesses are related to dynamic play at a strategic level and attack and defense. Uh, those concepts are pretty much the most complicated in chess. So <laughs> the reason why I'm not a grandmaster is heavily tied to that. Um, there's other reasons I'm not a grandmaster, but um, those are two big areas I, I I would need serious training by a high level person to get better at. Um, I love Bricotta's playthroughs. I like his analysis. Uh, he, he's really taking his time. He very much uh, is is focused on the detail of where to put units, but. I don't think he takes the maps as far as he could. Now, right now in his grand campaign, I don't fault him for that. He is doing a blind historic playthrough that is going to be really challenging. Uh, he's gonna, I think he's gonna find some interesting issues later in the war with this historic core. Um, so it's, it, I can easily forgive him for not necessarily pushing himself as far as he could strategically on these maps. So I'm hoping to add uh, more analysis about the maps because the maps have a lot going on, and hoping I'm hoping that I can convince you that you might want to take more time at deployment stage to get a feel for what you would do if you were an actual general doing these types of battles. Um, one of the things, another another. YouTube player that plays Panzer Corps, Lieutenant Joker, he has these streaming sessions where he talks about what actually happened in these battles in World War II. What is the composition of a division? Um, what, what were the tactics? Did the Germans actually succeed in steamrolling their opponents? You know, why did why did some of these battles end so quickly? How did they get all these mass surrenders? He starts diving into that level of detail. Uh, I think it's helpful to 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 listen to them talk, uh, uh, Lieutenant Joker and Bracada talk about war, both at a theoretical level and at a historical level. <clears throat> um, so I like to take those concepts that I'm learning from that and try to apply it to Panzer Corps at a higher level. Uh, the gains from doing so are not really apparent at Rommel. I, I kind of realized as I play through the Grand Campaign at Rommel level, that I have a lot of prestige. You can do elite replacements pretty regularly if you wanted to. 
um, you're realistically probably going to be able to buy every German super weapon that you want, even on a Rommel difficulty. And if you're looking for a great playthrough of that that's complete, Idle Police also has a playthrough of uh, um, the Grand Campaign that's actually pretty good. I learned a lot watching him play through it. I'm a little terrified of the Russians in 1942 on. And obviously, Deductor has <laughs> his videos that ends at Minsk in 44. And uh, when you see these these Russian hordes coming with Deductor's mod, it's even scarier. You know, he's going to make these these Soviets powerful. Uh, and, and he explains in his PDF manual why he made these changes. He thinks they're historically accurate. I strongly suspect he's right about that. You know, the Germans really had some issues in 1942 attacking Russians. Um, I read, I, I just recently got this book by Glantz called Stalingrad. It's 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 an historian who is writing about the battles before Stalingrad, the battle at Stalingrad, and the aftermath. And you're going to come away from it realizing that the Weimar was struggling in 1942 fighting the Soviets. I feel like sometimes that historical fact gets glossed over when we talk about what was changing in the dynamics of the war. Why were the Germans so successful before the war, or before 1942, and then why did they collapse in 1942? Uh, I think if you read some real modern books on what was actually happening historically, you'll come to this understanding that uh, the Soviets were getting better and better at fighting, and the infantry was actually pretty good in 1942. Um, the only reason why the Russians didn't push the Germans back earlier is that at an operational level, they had no idea what they were doing. So they were just throwing tanks out there with no coordination. They didn't really control the air, so the Germans were just blasting away and wiping out entire cores of tanks. Um, but that doesn't mean that uh, you know it was easy. So what I love about the Ductor's mod is I think you get into 1942, things start to get hard. Um, he ups the stats on, on a lot of units, and it's more realistic. Now, German units are also stronger in 1943. He even talks about it in his, his manual on his mod, because that was also true. Um, German infantry were getting those that were alive and had survived multiple years of war were very experienced units, and do they did have better stats, if, if we were thinking about this in a gameplay perspective. But uh, they also had a lot of attrition at that point. I mean, entire armies had been destroyed. So um, Deductor reflects this reality by saying, if you upgrade out of class, you lose X amount of experience. And by 42, it's very severe to upgrade outside of your class. So I, I love that part of his mod. We're a long ways away from seeing the consequences of that, but as you can imagine, your Panzer threes and Panzer fours that are at four stars of experience uh, are not just going to be upgraded to Tiger ones with four stars of experience. That wouldn't really be an accurate portrayal of uh, the German advancement of armor. Learning how to use a Tiger tank was very different from learning how to use a Panzer four. And there was a lot of attrition in the war and a lot of experienced soldiers that died. So it, you have to train a whole new group of soldiers to learn how to use these super weapons. So they're going to be inexperienced. And I think that's good for the mod to put that in there. So you're going to have to work really hard to keep your units alive as, as you upgrade them. Okay, so I'm going to try this again, uh, the Grand Campaign Poznan, because something happened where it crashed last time, and it might have been because I had some other programs open in the background, and my computer is four and a half years old, so probably pushing it too much, especially with the recording device. So let's start this again. Uh, this, oh, I have to have this. Let's get it done. Okay. Okay, so let's keep it proper. I'll read the I'll read the report and then we'll we'll go into it. I, I am gonna talk about strategy and, and my approach to maps. I want other 
lets players to do this as well, so I should lead by example. Okay, so September 1st, 1939, Operation Fall Weiss, our invasion of Poland has begun. You, Herr General, are charged with leading the primary assault from Germany's eastern border all the way to the heart of the Polish nation. As you command your forces from the front, I will keep you informed of your objectives and share intelligence with you as it becomes available during these briefings. Your first task is to launch an attack across the Oder River that is aimed at the Poznan region. In addition to securing your metropol metropolitan objectives, you should strive to occupy as many Polish airfields as your forces encounter. The capture of these should deal a crippling blow to the Polish Air Force, granting your forces near unchallenged mastery of the skies in the upcoming campaign. Good luck, Herr General, but be warned, failure here is not an option. We got two SE units. Those are uh, special equipment units. Uh, this is very, very important in my playthrough. Uh, to keep things honest, I'll, I'll not do uh, reloads to get an SE unit. That is seriously going to impact my strategy going forward. Uh, but it doesn't seem like other Let's Players do it. I think they should because it gets rid of the RNG fiasco of waiting to get an SE unit, but it seems like no serious Let's Player does that, so I won't do that. So I might get screwed immediately in the second scenario. Uh, experience Cap 225. We'll talk about that too as I play through this, part of my strategy. Uh, I am going to talk about this map. Before we get too into the details of tactics and mass attack. Let's look at this map. Uh, you know, you can immediately see the bulk of your forces are down here. Also, I mean, if you want to purchase screen, I have four core slots. <coughs> um, I'm really shortchanged. Assuming that a core or a division is 15 units, I am missing almost a third of my entire core. And I don't even have that much prestige to buy units. That That already is a problem. Um, I see these airfields, we got a rail station, um, th th this objective is really far away, it's it's in the northeastern cor uh, corner of the map. This is Poznan. I'm looking at this map, and I'm asking myself, what is the plan? How do, how do I, can I, can I see the big picture? How am I getting all of this stuff? Like, if you look at this map, it looks like... You've got a lot of stuff in a forested region. There's a river here. Um, I need to conquer a lot of objectives. In fact, I have 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I have 11 core objectives, 6 of which are airfields. Um, it looks like my units are misplaced. Like, why aren't they up here? Why don't I have all of my core up here, and then I push through here and go to Poznan and then clean up? You know, go to Conan next and then kind of wrap around and clean up. It just feels like my units are not in the appropriate place. On the other hand, this looks nasty. I mean, this is forest, some very heavy forest, actually. Mountainous regions right in front of the city. You know, if I put a unit here and I don't deal with the Air Force, I'm more vulnerable from the air. That's something to think about. Down here, there's a lot of open space. But even so, forest everywhere, that's going to slow me down. I'll have to stay on the roads. There's basically two arteries here from uh, this rail station. So if I'm going to go over here and take these objectives, it looks like I can do this road or this road. And in the middle of all this, I have no idea what's over here. I've, I've played this scenario before. I know what's over there. But if you were looking at this for the first time, you don't know what's over there. I, I mean, yeah, I could send my entire force to this Polish checkpoint, and then I can take the rail station and maybe, you know, ship things around, and then I can push for uh, Kalis, but what if there's stuff here, right? Um, you know, they could attack me. My whole northern flank could be pressured. Um, I do have a scout car. I might be able to use that, but a scout car by itself isn't conquering all of this. I don't even know what's over here yet. So, you know, just like from a primitive perspective, it looks like the idea is you go here, and then you go north, and then I suppose I split my forces into three. One, one group goes here, one group goes here, and one group goes here, and maybe I clean this region up in the meantime. I, I don't particularly like this plan, uh, mostly because it, I have 14 turns. I'm not sold on the idea that 
I'm going to be able to easily push through here and then split my forces. Uh, I'm going to be slowed down by this forest. That's a huge problem. Uh, I also want this airfield. Somebody has to go over here and grab this airfield. Uh, I also am missing a lot of units. So that means attacking. I need to attack critical points. You know, and I would argue my first critical points are here and here. I need to break this front line so that way it opens the way to the back. It doesn't look like I can really do that. I have one scout unit up here. That that seems like a problem. Um, and maybe I have overkill down here. On the other hand, if I look at my units, um, I have one artillery unit, and it's not even one of the good ones. It's just a 7.5 centimeter gun. Um, I mean, what is the plan? I don't have a lot, right? <coughs> now, this is a surprise attack, so it's possible that these border areas are not defended. But I think that's a little silly to assume, because Poland knows that the relationship with Germany has been deteriorating. Um, so I think it would be crazy to just assume I could bulldoze my way through. Um, so uh, I look at this, and I notice this actually has rail transport. Um, this is a rail station. And can I? Not yet. I need to move my scout car. So why don't I uh, move my scout car? One thing to note, and I forgot to mention this in my first video, this guy has uh, spotting of four. In the original Grand Campaign, these scout cars have spotting of three. This makes this scout car insanely overpowered uh, as a scout car. So it has plus two movement, plus one spotting, and I think there's some minor stats changes, and then there's three ammo. It has. Three ammo, yeah. So <clears throat> um, that's the consequence of having a super-powered scout car. Uh, but I think it's totally worth it. This is not meant to be used in heavy combat. Don't try it. You're just asking for trouble. By the way, because of the fact that I know this scout car has four spotting, I know this is unoccupied. So I can safely uh, travel here. Because I know it has four spotting, I know the airfield is empty and that it doesn't appear there's like a huge reserve force waiting to attack me back here. Um, I also see this icon, this this red stack of bullets is telling me that this anti-aircraft gun is out of ammo. So it's really safe for me to attack this. And I got lucky and I killed it. Uh, I feel very happy to take the airfield. I only got 12 prestige. I just took a major objective and got 12 prestige. So that, that tells you that I'm playing at 25% prestige. Uh, the other thing I notice <coughs> is there's a, a plane here. Uh, it's not very strong. It's out of ammo. So it should be pretty safe for me to grab my fighter and bring it over. Uh, in my first video, I mentioned the stats on the fighter. Um, a lot of the airplanes in this game are going to have higher def air defense, making uh, air units harder to kill. So it's something to think about uh, when you're playing. You have to you have to more carefully coordinate your air force because um, it's just going to be harder to kill things. I brought my fighter bomber over because it provides mass attack on what I want to attack. It only works if I haven't fired with it yet. And I've never seen anyone talk about the formula of what is actually happening with mass attack. The manual just says it, it, it hits the initiative of what you're attacking. Um, so this is less likely to fire back. I don't really have to worry about it because it doesn't have ammo. So let's just make our attack. And I, and I killed it. Great. That's good. I've talked about the fighter bomber already. So I'll attack. And I damaged it. Um, it's entrenchment, if I were to look, this guy was at 3 entrenchment, indicated with that shovel symbol, and now it's at 2. Um, entrenchment will be something we'll talk about uh, when it becomes more relevant. Like this area, this is a Polish checkpoint, but it's also got the entrenched symbols. It's really annoying because it means that units are entrenching faster. It's just, and then it means it's harder to dig them out. 
I don't know what's over here. I know from this infantry, which has spotting of two, I know that there's nothing here. So I can move my tank here, which has spotting of two, and I've discovered uh, a scouting unit. I actually looked at Deductor's uh, mod, and he basically didn't change their attack values. He just changed their defense values. He did it mostly with, uh, I think it was Soviet and Polish cavalry, because they were harder to kill than the, than what the base game was, indica was indicating. Um, I don't find them too difficult to take out, so I think he must have only made minor changes. I have not talked about this yet. This is a tactical bomber. You will hear a lot of Let's Players talk about their love affair with tactical bombers, and I definitely think through 41, for sure, uh, having a, a tactical bomber is very useful. Uh, one of the things you need to know when you're playing this game, and one of the great things about the game is historically German armor was garbage. And I'm going to get more into detail on that. Probably this scenario or next scenario. Uh, it's so, the German armor is so bad that I don't even play with it. When the second I get a chance to get rid of my tanks, I'm going to get rid of them. Um, I mean, they, they are so bad. I will give the doctor a little credit. He said the tanks were a little poorly represented with the original equipment files. They are not as bad with the doctor's mod, the Panzer One and Panzer Two, but they are unimpressive nonetheless. And I'll, I'll go into the stats on what they look like in a second. So the tactical bomber. Um, <coughs> let me pull up. A game to look at the stats. So our basic tactical bomber. Had 37 fuel. Already you see a problem. I found in the original Panzer Corps. Tactical bombers were running out of fuel pretty easily. It's worse now. So it goes from 37 fuel to 31. You're looking at almost an 18% drop. Uh, and the amount of fuel you have. Not insignificant. In the original game, the, the tactical bombers had five ammo, and now it has three. But because of how severe the fuel situation is, I'm not, this isn't such a big deal. You're constantly flying this tactical bomber back to the air. So, I, I, you know, in practice, I think this is good for prohibiting the player from sitting on top of a river hex and bombing away. That's one of the consequences. You're going to have to, to move this guy around a lot. Uh, let's see. It's soft attack is lowered. Um, I think he said something about tactical bombers were much more effective against armor than infantry. And in the original game, it had 10 soft attack, and now it has 8 soft attack. Uh, hard attack in the original was 6, and it's 5 here. Um, maybe he felt that uh, they made the tactical bomber too good against armor. Its air defense is much, or its air attack is much higher. I don't know what that means practically. Maybe it fights back better. It's because it goes from three to five, but maybe that doesn't mean much against fighters. Um, its naval attack is slightly higher. So um, I don't know where I heard this from. Maybe it was Lieutenant Joker, but tactical bombers um, were actually more effective against the Navy than strategic bombers. It's probably Deductor, and he changed the stats around to kind of reflect that. So this is stronger against the Navy. And strategic bombers are weaker against naval vessels. Uh, historically, they apparently didn't really lay waste to them the way we see in the original game. Uh, ground defense is lower. And air defense is the same. So th those are some big changes. The other big change is it's 330 prestige. <coughs> to buy a, a brand new tactical bomber. The original game was 254. This is such a serious problem, and because I'm playing on uh, double Rommel, essentially, I'm never going to buy a tactical bomber. The reality is, I'm given a tactical bomber, I know later on I'm going to get one of the most devastating weapons of war in Rudel, which is a tactical bomber. I'm going to have two tactical bombers, and in most scenarios, when when the going gets tough, 
you're probably never deploying more than one tactical bomber. It's very, very dangerous um, to fly these guys out there, especially with Detector's Mod. Fighters are aggressive, they're nasty, they're mean, they're going to take out your planes even with fighter protection. You have to be careful about how you use things. Um, so I'm going to fly this over here. He should do some damage. This is good. This is better than the last time I tried this. Uh, now I'm going to move this tank. I want to talk about the stats on this tank. You know, Detector tries to make a compelling case that this tank doesn't suck, but it sucks. <laughs> so, um, he made them slightly more expensive by 7. Uh, fuel is the same, ammo is the same, soft attack is the same. Um, actually he made them worse. So in the game, ground defense is 5. In the original game it was 6. Air defense is 6, it was 7, and his close defense is worse by 1. Yeah, no wonder these, these tanks are so terrible. <laughs> and then the Panzer 1, uh, B, is basically worse compared to the original game. Yeah, it's actually one point more expensive and it's just worse on stats. Uh, the, the thing that really kills the tank... Close defense on tanks is never really good, but initiative of two, and this does have an initiative of three, but the Panzer II C has an initiative of four, and the 30 AT of five, and that may not seem like a lot, but it really is a lot. Um, the, the Panzer ones are garbage. I only use them when I have to to fill out my core, and then I sell them off. Um, so we'll move him over here. Uh, I have a mountain unit. I've already talked about the stats of the mountain unit. They're really strong. They move through um, everything except for bokage and uh, forest. They move through everything but those two things with one movement. Um, so hills, it can easily move through all these hills. I am probably just going to bring this guy over. I mean, I could, I could offer more mass attack. I don't really want to attack with these unless I have to because I'm selling these units later and I don't care about them accumulating kills. Attack. The mass attack did not help. Uh, so let's attack again. And ironically my pathetic panzer one was not damaged and my super awesome mountain units were damaged. So next order of business, uh, we're going to ship these guys up here. The reason for that is I need to conquer this region, and I have a scout car. This scout car is insufficient. <laughs> I need to get stuff up there. So I have infantry at a rail station. They don't even have trucks, so this is a quick way to get them up there. Um, this is, I want to move quickly. There's no plan that I can imagine that doesn't involve me moving quickly to grab this objective and this one. What's nice is this is a rail station, so in theory, I might be able to ship things somewhere. But we'll see how that works in practice. Um, because of the fact I want to move quickly, I don't see a lot of use for my anti-tank gun in the south. I do like the idea of shipping it up north and parking it in a forest and there there's more opportunities for ambushes and depending on what's down here you know my anti-tank gun can contribute to the assault in the north i i'm looking at the north and i'm thinking it's going to be slow going and that's really good for my anti-tank gun i think it's very intuitive to move it there let's uh you know move my motorized infantry over here one thing you should know is that he made all um, transportation twice as expensive. So if I wanted to buy a Weimark, it's 100 to buy the most basic, um, <clears> hope <throat> the Opal Blitz is not 50 anymore, it's 100. The consequences of that are rather nasty for the player. So when if you wanted to do elite replacements and you have equipped transportation to your infantry, it is more expensive to do elite replacements. That's something to think about when you're playing this game. Um, the other thing to think about is <coughs> elite replacements under deductors mod are more expensive. 
and over strengthening is more expensive. So it's gonna it, it should change your perspective on how exactly you're gonna compose your forces. I'm just gonna let you know that I'm not buying trucks. I might buy one or two trucks later. When I have some pioneers, I think it would be nice to be able to get pioneers to a critical location quickly. But um all of these guys, these infantry, I don't have to worry about with cavalry because they're their own transportation, but when I get other types of infantry, I have to think very carefully about whether I want to get trucks because my infantry is going to get damaged, and at a certain point, I have to use elite replacements. It is going to get very expensive. Now, not as expensive as tanks, but still, prestige is such a serious long-term problem that from the get-go, you have to start thinking about stuff like that. Um, so I have one motorized infantry, that's okay. I uh, happen to know that this is a garrison unit, so I feel pretty okay sending this here. Um, also, we know that there was unarmed um, equipment up here, so it's possible that whatever's here is also unarmed. I know that's not true, but um, you know I'm going to take a little risk as a as a commander and do that. All right, uh, before I end my turn, I'm at 412 prestige. I desperately want artillery. This is where the fun starts. If I want to buy a basic piece of artillery, it's 176 prestige. Uh, let me pull up what it is in the old game. It is 132 prestige before we buy the truck. Think about that. The old game, 132 prestige for a 7.5 centimeter gun. And he has upped the price a lot. Uh, and it's even worse when you realize that you are paying an extra 50 prestige to get the truck. So it's very important um, to think about this. I am thinking very long term. I know that there's a lot of scenarios coming up where I need certain equipment. Um, I'm going to want to buy a couple of fighters for Warsaw. Those are each 410 prestige. Where in the hell am I getting 820 prestige? I want to buy a strategic bomber for Modlin. At least that is cheaper. Uh, I think that's cheaper. Oh no, it's more expensive. Never mind. So even the strategic bombers are, are more expensive. I want to buy one of these for Modlin. I want to buy, you're going to see an unusual strategy for me, and I think it's more effective than tanks. I want to buy some 88 guns. But uh, if you look at the original game, uh, it's a 274 prestige to buy the 88 gun. He made that cheaper. But unfortunately, um, he, it cost 80 prestige to buy this particular truck, but here it's 100. Um, so it actually costs, oh, that's interesting. I didn't realize that. This truck is not more expensive. Or no, it is more expensive, but the 88 gun itself is cheaper. Because the total for buying this is 324 prestige, and then the original game is 344. Oh, that's, that's good. I think he did that so people would use this weapon. You should use this weapon. Uh, I'm gonna use it in ways that are things you've seen before, but maybe not in this in, in certain contexts. Um, I, I really want to buy one of these. The reality is I can't. So I'm going to buy this artillery with a truck, and I'm going to put it up north, because if I'm going to do crazy things up north, I better bring some artillery to help me. Um, it sucks that it's 7.5, but I just can't afford to spend... 359, and if I look at the original game, um, it would be 242 to buy the exact same thing. You're, you're spending an extra 117 prestige to buy one of the most important parts of your core. I actually don't have a problem with that because artillery is important. And what Deductor is saying is if you want a lot of artillery in your core, you must be willing to pay for it. And given how incredibly useful it is, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. Some other changes he made is that in the original game, um, you could get a Storm Panzer, and I think it's like 
40 before you can get a Storm Panzer. And in the original game, you could get this in 1940, but he offers it right away. I can't imagine buying this in 1939. I just don't have the prestige. I have 136 prestige and three slots, so I'm going to do the only rational thing I can do and buy another infantry and stick it here. So at least I have a somewhat respectable um, force that can kind of help take these objectives out. What What's going to happen after I take this is if I was playing this blind would be wait and see. But my intention is to take this objective and take my small force if this isn't heavily defended and, and, and take this region out and then move on to Poznan. Um, that's the plan. We'll see what, what happens because um, sometimes the AI will behave in a strange way and might put its units in some place I wouldn't have anticipated. Um, so I'm at 29 prestige. So you can already see the prestige problem is catastrophic already. So let me end my turn and let's see what the AI does. Great. <clears throat> we have clear weather. We're sending you a special reconnaissance unit to supplement your forces. Although the flight leader of this unit has been deemed unsuitable for combat, there are those that believe he may have untapped potential. To that end, I highly recommend you not disband this recon flight, but instead make the maximum use out of it in every battle to come. Let's take a look at this guy. Uh, oops. If you alt uh, uh, left click, you can get the stats. Um, he looks he, he looks like a tactical bomber. He is a tactical bomber. Probably the same stats. Battle history. You get heroes, awards, and kills, and flags that they captured. But if you look at the hero, it's brutal, and it's underwhelming. Attack minus 5, defense minus 2, spotting plus 2. Um, I'm going to actually name him, which is Alt-N. So attack plus 5, or minus 5, defense minus 2, spotting plus 2. So you can look at that and go, well, this guy is going to suck on attack. I mean, he's attack minus 5. On the other hand, his spotting is 3, so he can effectively act as a scout. Um, so if I'm really interested in this region, and I am really interested in this region, because it could dictate the flow of battle, I can send this guy over here and find out what's going on. And then I can attack. And he did 1 damage. So he is spotting of three, so one, two, three. So I can see in this huge region, the only thing here is um, this infantry and anti-aircraft gun that's got its ammo back, and I can see um, a fighter. Now if I look at this fighter, you can see that five units of it are suppressed. So this was probably at five strength, and then the AI spent some prestige strengthening it. Um, this makes me want to attack this. It, it just it looks juicy. Uh, I'm gonna definitely bring my fighter bomber over for that, and I'm gonna attack it. And it was a massive fail. And I'll attack it again. The reason I attacked it again, even though I wasn't going to kill it, is because if the AI decides to strengthen it again, it will have five suppressed units, which helps my fighter. Um, so that was a massive fail. So the AI is going to pour some prestige in there. Um, <clears throat> so I think a plan of attacking uh, Noe Tomizl and then plowing through to this Polish checkpoint is a good one. For now, I think it's a reasonable plan. So I'm going to... Uh, make that push, bring in the infantry on the road. He does have vision of two, but it's highly unlikely he wants to, to come out and play and attack my infantry. Next I'm going to move my artillery. We're going to unload this guy and move him in. Uh, they can move through the forest because they're on a road. Normally infantry take two movement to go through a forest. Just a fact to remember. Let's shift my anti-tank gun up because I want to bring some heavy forces up here. Um, I'm probably just going to take this. Yeah. 
I'm going to take this. Remember, I can see four. So one, two, three, four. You can see that there's nothing at all in this huge radius. This guy can see three. It looks like uh, this region is ripe. Um, I can start doing things. I'm going to actually poke my head out. And boom, I spot, um, I spot an anti-aircraft gun. I poke my head out because I, I'm curious what's going on over here. I still don't know what's here, but I can see that we got a full strength anti-aircraft gun and we got a five strength bomber. Huh, I wonder if the AI strengthens that next turn. Anyway. Um, so there's that. I don't know what's here, so why don't we find out? And I'm going to stick my mountain units in the hills. What we have is a unit entrenched at five. So let's begin the process of digging it out. He suppressed it too. Not great. Um, let's, let's make another attempt to attack. One thing to keep in mind is I like to attack with artillery then plants because you suppress them and then if there are units that are unsuppressed, you can attack with the plane, hopefully damage the units, and it lowers the number of units that can counterattack. And actually, my little bomber did really well. Look at this. I attacked twice with my uh, tactical bomber and he's at one ammo. Um, you can imagine this might change your perspective on a lot of battles. So he's entrenched at three, and, and only one unit can fire back. I uh, am going to bring up some support. Where do I want to put this guy? I'm going to... He's on the road. I'm going to bring him, and then I'm going to attack this. Hopefully I can. I did not kill it. I'm going to attack it again. Um, I don't mind my Panzer 1 getting damaged because I don't care about them. Okay, so this tank, I left this tank back because he was on the road so his movement's more flexible than the tank off the road. By conquering this uh, hex, the AI is blinded by the presence of my troops. I do have a, a very mobile infantry here. I'm going to park him down in here. Well, wait. Do, do I have a spot that's good? I know there's basically nothing over here. So if I'm envisioning my next move, let me think about this. My mountain unit can't actually go to this forest hex because one, two, and it takes two to get in. What My infantry unit could go here. And what's good about that is next turn he can go in. <coughs> he could go in here, and maybe I'm out of vision range with the city, and then maybe when this, if there's a counterattack, they'll run into my infantry. My mountain unit actually can't get in there. Uh, yeah, I have to think about that. Anyway, I need to bring this guy. So let's move my artillery forward. I should be out of vision range. If there was cavalry in here, I would get punished. Um, but I happen to know that there's not. Okay, that's everything. I <laughs> I have 53 prestige. It's going great. <laughs> that was actually good. Oh wow! Wow. Uh, I think what happened there was the AI. This is a major objective, and the AI is kind of brain dead about this. It goes, oh, you know, you've abandoned this objective, so let me attack it. And I put infantry in a forest, and so when they're attacked, it's, I think it's, they they have close defense. And uh, I think I also just rolled really well, because anti-tank attacking on an open hex is not such a bad thing. But it's probably a bad thing to attack infantry in a forest, because... I don't, I don't know how that works exactly, so I my close defense is activated when I'm in a forest, um, and the attack, maybe what happens is this anti-tank gun loses a lot of initiative, and 
wasn't able to hurt me, and then I counterattack, and maybe I even get a bonus from being attacked in the forest. So anyway, that was good. Um, I'm going to move my infantry in to this hex, now a Tomzi. It's an obvious move. I'm moving forward. This is getting me closer to Poznan and this objective. Uh, I can unload my anti-tank. Um, I'm really... I think I am going to just send this guy here. I don't want my infantry on an on an uh, open hex because if there's a tank that comes in or if cavalry catches me there, they can hurt me. But cavalry can also hurt me in the forest. They're really nasty when they're in the forest. So you can see I have all this movement with the scout. Um, in fact, if I were to... Look at that. Yeah, he the AI strengthened this bomber. I have to be careful. Um, what to do with this scout? I, I should probably put the scout on an open hex. I know one, two, three, four. Like, I know in this huge radius there's nothing there. Uh, I can even go all the way down here and attack this. I don't want to do that. There's a couple of problems. He's at two ammo, and if I attack, um, we'll be at one ammo. So if if there's anything coming from the east, I've doomed my scout. He's going to get attacked once, and then he can't even fight back if he's attacked again. Before I do anything, let me see if I can kill him. No, that's okay. Um, this plane is going to resupply next turn, and this plane is going to go terrorize me. So if a, if my opponent has scouting, um, can I go here and then back? I think I can. I'm going to be patient. I'm just going to go here. And then I'm going to go here with my artillery. I'm not really, there's nothing here. We know for a fact there's nothing up here. And then I'm going to take my fighter and I'm going to go here and cover everything. And I'm by the airfield. Um, I could also move this because this is going to strengthen and eight of it will be suppressed. So it's not going to be dangerous next turn. Um, now, if somebody comes out and sees my scout card, and they don't see my fighter, there's no way the AI isn't going to be salivating over attacking it. This is a fighter trap, a potential fighter trap, and it would make my life easier for it to get ambushed, basically. Come over here and try to take out this unit, which actually has... two air defense. Maybe this isn't a tempting target. So I have to think very carefully about potentially, if I move in on this hex, for sure he's going to come down. So I might want to move this here somewhere, out of vision range, just to protect myself. Uh, my uh, tactical bomber is, I'm going to bring it to the artillery. I, I want to um, get it refueled. It's no good to me to... I'm not really ready to take this hex yet. It's not really good to me for me to waste his last shot on a long shot. Uh, so strategically, what's the update I'm thinking about? I know from my scout car there is this tactical bomber that is going to attack next turn. It's fully strengthened up. Um, the fighter is out of commission this turn. That's good. I do have a scouting plane. Ooh, right, I forgot about that. Um, I'm going to scout. Here's the thing. It has vision range of three, right? So I am legitimately interested in Rzeznia and uh, Ostro <laughs> Will Kopalski. Uh, so is there, if I could find a way to move the scout plane to be within range of both of them, I should do it. And I think this spot is good. Oh, uh, and the reason, this is great, right? I can see this is empty. That actually promotes the idea that I can split my forces. Send one here, maybe send something up here. Um, I also know 
this is three hexes. One, two, three. There's nothing here in this region. I know there's nothing here, and now I know there's nothing here. And I spied uh, three units. Um, these tankettes are super annoying, and they have a lot of movement. Um, five, they have five movement, and these guys have five. But it feels like they can get to wherever they want to go. It's, it's really annoying. Um, so five movement, like this is on almost on the road. So like one, two, three, four, five. If I were to move too much, it could hit me. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. Can I put something there? I can. What's the vision on these guys? Three. I'm actually going to put something here because I think one, two, three, four, five. This is as far as this cavalry unit can go, and I'm not going to be able to get there. On the other hand, if it tries to swing in this way, I can just park a tank here and ambush it. That's great. How far can this guy go? Yeah. Okay. Oh, he can reach the countryside. That's good. I'm going to park you here. Um, I need infantry to assault this position. So I think... I'm going to put a tank here, and I'm going to put a tank here. Put them on open hexes, where their initiative isn't handicapped, then I'm going to attack. One thing I should mention that I forgot to mention is the 7.5 centimeter gun is not a bad investment, because it has three range. In the original game, it had two range. So nobody ever bought these weapons. Um, so it might seem like I'm handicapping myself by buying a 7.5, but they're certainly fairly effective in 1939. When I get the prestige, I'll upgrade them. And it's not really a huge loss because it has three range. Um, anyway, what to do with this guy? I got three spots. Um, so this guy can move five, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. This guy could be targeted, but I think he can survive two attacks. That's assuming that this doesn't get ambushed. They can't see me. This guy can see two. Uh, so this bomber, which can move uh, 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This bomber, it might make sense to park it here. Unfortunately, if that if that cavalry unit moves in, it could see this. That bomber could wipe him out. I'm going to park it here. I don't mind if this gets damaged by the bomber. And if he moves the plane first, it should get ambushed. But actually, he's not going to move the plane first because he has no targets. Yep, he's going to stay there. Anyway, I want to protect my core unit because I want to sell that later. Uh, this guy, I, I don't want to put him here because this tankette's going to see and it's going to come in. I don't know if these are going to get attacked because the infantry can see my artillery. What they can't see is this infantry. So I guess the question is, do I want this infantry to be a part of the force that takes the city and then goes here? Or do I want this infantry to move up north? It actually has a truck. So my mountain unit doesn't have a truck, so it's going to be really slow. I know this is empty, so this is a rail line, so I could um, conquer this city with a mountain unit <coughs> and then ship him up here. And this guy can go in this direction and help me take this city. Um, notice I could easily move over here, but I have two infantry over here, and um, I might end up having to send both down here to dig out this entrenched unit. 
I am going to, he has a truck, so I'm going to be safe and just move my infantry there. Um, just to keep him with artillery protection. And that's my move. That went well. And that did not go well. Wow, did my uh, Panther 1 go crazy? Okay. Um, he is out of commission. Interesting. So, I need to shoot that down. Can I get to him? How am I going to do that? Okay, one second. Let me... Yeah. Okay, I shot that down. I can now bring my tactical bomber over. And my tactical bomber, it's not even cloudy, it just totally it, it just totally failed. Okay. This guy is out of commission. I'm gonna Yeah. That backfired on me pretty badly. I have to bring him out. Okay, let's attack this spot. Um, where's the other cavalry unit? Yeah, he's way too far away. This guy might even be going this way. Um, can I kill them with this? I honestly, oh, what can I do with this guy? Not much. I need to bring him back. Alright, I'm going to take a shot at this. Um, just in case, I'm going to do something really risky. I'm going to attack this infantry in the open. Mostly because of... Uh, I don't have another way of taking it out. Oh, I have this. I'm going to do that because I want to take that cavalry unit out. And I've damaged this cavalry unit. So if he comes in to attack me, it will be less of a problem. Can I move this guy? No. Okay, I'm going to risk this tank. And now he can't reinforce. Also, can this cavalry unit even touch my infantry now? Wait. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. No. One, two, three. It uses all of its movement to go in there. And actually, I don't even think it can go in there. I think it has to be adjacent. He could move this. If he moves his, if he attacks and then moves it away, it'll it'll be uh, one, two, three, and then it'll hit me. Um. I can't, I can offer up, interesting, I was thinking about offering my scout as bait for the tank yet, so it wouldn't hit me, this would go very poorly for me since I'm in the woods, it's an auxiliary unit, I don't mind if it's damaged, um, do I need two infantry in the south, or should I immediately go for Pazan? Yeah, strategically, uh, my Panzer I got badly damaged. It's not really a good tank. My plan worked, except that the cavalry unit ripped apart my Panzer I. Um, I took out their bomber. That's really important. I'm hoping the fighter goes after my reconnaissance plane and not um, any of these units. This is out of vision range, so he should be safe. Um... This cavalry unit can't reach me. Did I already use this? Yeah. Okay, we're going to attack. Whoa! Um, I did not see that coming. Huh. 
interesting. I was, wow, my mountain unit just wrecked that garrison unit. So do I take this? I don't think I need to do that. I, um, this tank being so, that's not part of the plan. The plan is to send a tank over here to take that objective. So I have to figure out, do I send this tank over there? And then who's going over here? Um, I know if I clear these units out, the pathway to this Rzeznia area is cleared. The other thing I have to think about on this map is, is this cavalry unit going to reinforce or is it going to attack that way? It has a vision of three, right? One, two, three. I could park this here. I know this is basically empty. Um, there's just nothing here. So I'm not expecting to get hit in the back. So if this cavalry unit pushes there, it's going to get ambushed. Um, there's no reason for this guy to think there's anything here. On the other hand, if he moves the tank out away so the cavalry can come in and hit my infantry, he'll get ambushed almost certainly. I also have to think about the fact that my backup tank could get wrecked. Not really part of the plan. I could go in and start wearing this guy out. If I move this here, yeah, I can do this safely just because my scout car. There's no way for this cavalry unit to swing around. Um, I can block, I think I am going to send this infantry here, and then I'm going to send this infantry here. This unit could, in theory, like, oh wait, one, two, three, four, okay. Nothing can actually hit my infantry. Um, and I'm going to move my, uh, oh, I have to be careful. He has a fighter. I'm going to move him. Here, yeah, out of out of range. The fighter could attack my infantry. I would be shocked, though. The fighter might go for my tank. That's something to think about. Okay, I'm gonna send this tank over here in case anything weird happens. There's no way I'm attacking. At least this guy can't reinforce because I've got two units adjacent to it with the plane over it. So he's going to attack. Maybe my tank. He might actually survive that because this is a Panzer II and that's just a TKS. I'm not going to attack here. It's entrenched at six. So if I look at the uh, what's the if you control right click when you're trying to do the combat, it'll tell you a lot of stats and it says rugged defense chance twenty percent. Ah, uh, there's just no way. I It's way too high. I would probably just damage my unit needlessly. My artillery... I'm going to move my artillery here. Um, I'm totally out of range. There's nothing that can reach me. So, Alright, let's see how bad this goes. Yes, the, the, the fighter went for my reconnaissance flight. And my infantry got damaged as expected. And he got ambushed. It's a shame that my infantry didn't damage it. Okay, I'm going to take that cavalry unit out, and that's going to open up a lot of things. Um, yeah. Panzer two, and then I'm going to. Um, Try to kill this. Very smartly. Uh, my anti tank gun got a first action. He took some damage, that's okay. Surprise it took that much damage. So he got 32 experience, okay. Uh, let's attack. So he's let's let's risk it now. Oh, wow. 
I took two damage. That's okay. I can I can take this. I'm taking some damage, but I don't I don't mind so much because um, I'm not playing with uh, experience reduction, so it's okay. So let's do the mass attack again, and let's see if we can take the spider out. My spider has been spectacularly bad. Um, he's just going to go back to the airfield. Uh, he's going to go here. So, uh, now that I've cleared out this counterattack, and I happen to know this is empty, that's motivating for me to uh, park my mountain unit here. And I know it's a rail link, and I can ship this up here. I might want to clear the way, though. Um... I might want to conquer the city hex first. I don't know. I'll have to figure out what I want to do with that. Um, I think this guy has one more job he can do that's moderately useful. He can help me take this spot. This guy... Uh, yeah, I'm going to send him there, and I'm going to send this guy here. I'm blocking both hexes which is good. And this guy... Um, I need to send this guy as quickly as possible to help me take this objective. Um, he's at half strength, not part of the plan, but you do what you have to do. Actually, I have a better idea. I'm going to send my scout car over here, and I'm going to have him conquer this and then move off the hex. And then uh, there's no way to see that I move something in. And I'm going to put my mountain unit here. Or not my mountain unit, my Weimark infantry here. And I blocked this hex. Uh, I'm going to move this here and attack this next turn. I don't care if the fighter attacks that, it's not going to. Okay. Um, what do I want to do with my fighter? I'm going to just refuel him. Okay. I'm not worried, he doesn't have, it doesn't appear there's more of an air force, so he should be okay. I don't want to attack any of this. I don't have artillery support or any support really. Okay. End my turn. So things are opening up. I'm, you know, this is kind of chaotic. This has been very different from the way it normally goes for me. Um, one of my tanks just got almost destroyed, but I've had some other really good kills. So the path has opened up more than I could reasonably expect. Uh, I'm going to conquer this. So, anti-tank gun. Oh, I crossed a river hex. That, that lowered my movement. Um, interesting. What does my panzer do here? Oh, I can send this guy to get part of this. Oh, wait, do I want to? One second, let me just kill this first. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna just take this out. Then I can send him down. This is actually going really fast in this region, and my fighter can kill this. I don't normally conquer the middle region this fast, but I had like a huge kill on this checkpoint. Um, I'm just vulnerable here now, and I my infantry is going to be slow. Alright. We're going to do this. Then we're going to do this. 
I honestly want this infantry to come out. Um, okay. This is a problem. I need to get rid of this somehow. Um, okay, I can bait the uh, tank. I can bait the anti-aircraft gun. It knows I'm here. And I hope it goes to the river hex, and then I might be able to damage it. That's one trick you can try here. The AI is going to be very tempted to attack my tactical bomber. Um, strategically, things are going out going pretty well. Um, I just need to get something over here. Oh, I can attack them. Um, a lot of things went really well. It was a fighter who attacked my reconnaissance flight. That's fine. Do I attack this? It's not even suppressed that much. I'm going to send him here, and then... Um, I'll try to send my tank up here. And oh, let's hit the artillery, definitely. The weaker I make that artillery, the better off I am. Um he can just get ammo. I'm not ready to attack Poznan. Alright, it is time to move an artillery piece to Poznan. So He's used a lot of ammo. I should just resupply him anyway. Okay. Alright. Can't really do much right now. Um, interesting. The AI did not take the bait. I shouldn't be surprised. I'm going to do something kind of obnoxious. Um, double block that entry in case the AI attacks. Alright, <laughs> my half-strength infantry, are you going to be able to do diddly? Yes. Okay, that's there. Yeah, this is supposed to be stronger. <laughs> um, yep, let's move my infantry up. Let's move my anti-tank up. Let's move. Um, I'm going to offer this as bait at some point. I'll move you here. You are out of ammo. Gotta pull you back. Uh, what to do with you? Do I hit the artillery or do I hit you? I'm going to hit you. I need to begin the process of um, weakening that, and it's a big problem now because I have a very weak tank. I am not going to attack. I'm sure that 13% uh, chance of rugged defense is unpleasant, so I'm going to leave that alone. Huh. Let's hit this again. He's going to attack my, my uh, recon. I don't mind that it gets damaged. That's okay. Yeah. I'm not going to mess with this right now. I'm at a vision range. <laughs> so this vehicle, the only way it would see me is if this guy moved here and attacked. And I don't think it will. What can I do? Nothing. Okay. End my turn. We're halfway through. Oh, he attacked that tank. That's great. Yeah, my recon car held up well. That is great. That that was really lucky rolls. I ran out of ammo and an anti-tank gun only did that little damage. First, we need to get rid of this annoying tank guy. I have just the recipe for that. Um, I need that out of the way.
I'm gonna go here. Do I have a fighter? Yes, I do. Okay, attack this thing, please. Perfect! Um, it was taken out. Attack this. I might be able to... Yeah. Perfect. I can kill this with my weakened tank next turn. You're gonna find in the playthrough that I am very abusive towards units I don't care about. Um, yeah, you can totally do that. I'm gonna go here. And then I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna do this. Okay. So, like, I don't care about my Panzer 1s in the first few scenarios. Them getting damaged is not a big deal. Um, as long as they're not destroyed, that's all I care about. I don't even care that my infantry is at half damage. I'm just going to do normal replacements. <coughs> this is cleared up. I just need to conquer that. Let us begin. Uh, put you here. He's entrenched at three. That's good. So I have to get rid of this gun if I want to start attacking Poznan. Maybe I can bait the infantry out. It won't. It's a, the infantry is in an important hex. So, all right, let's attack. And it won't retreat because it's entrenched at level two. Wow, that was a good roll for me. Um, so my scout's probably going to get hit again. That helped a lot. Thank you. So um, now it may not get hit again. He may just reinforce. Perfect. Perfect. Um, okay. The assault is going well. Please keep attacking my Panzer 1. I really need to get rid of that artillery piece. It's annoying. <laughs> Strategically, um, basically the plan that like a casual player would have come up with actually worked. I wasn't expecting it to. I, I don't normally approach the map this way. But uh, I kind of pulled the AI in to an attack, and I did a lot of damage, and it set up this counterattack that wiped the field, so um, the way was open to the back. And because I bought an extra infantry, it was able to march to Poznan and block the hex. I don't know why the AI is thinking so long here. Maybe because it's trying to buy and I blocked all the hexes. <coughs> Alright. First order of business. I really want you to die. That is not how it's supposed to go. Um, let's attack again. Huh. Alright. Do your job. And hilariously, my uh, Panzer one, despite being in a weakened state, did a fine job. And how about reconnaissance flight kicking butt? Um, Now I'm going to offer up this Panther 2. Oh, perfect. Great. This is perfect. Now I can send this guy in to finish. Move. To finish the earth. And I now have the 8 strength Panzer 2 that can be used as a scapegoat. Next, I'm going to actually attack you. 
because they need the help. Let's begin the process of digging these guys out. It's still pretty ugly. Okay, I'm going to attack you. And then I'm going to do this and get my anti-tank weapon at easy target. That means the assault on that location can begin. I have a lot up here, so it's okay. Um, this is more disorganized, so let's attack here. I have two strong infantry that can attack Poznan. I have one strong infantry that can attack here, and I still haven't conquered this spot. And I don't have a lot of strong units, so... That's why I sent the uh, fighter bomber to de-entrench there. Yeah, if you look at this, 23% um, chance of rugged defense. No way. Not doing it. Let's just refuel and see what the AI does. So the AI has three units left after turn nine. Everything else from this point on is de-entrenching. So I'm going to use the Air Force heavily. <clears throat> This is going really, really well. Um, I have a really badly damaged tank and a really badly damaged infantry. Um, but that's not such a big deal. I'm okay with that. My anti-tank took more damage than I wanted, but that's also okay. Because the experience, if you use it right, it can get good experience. My scout car taking damage is okay. Now that uh, all the anti-aircraft stuff is cleared out, I can start de-entrenching. Let's, let's start with this guy. I want you out. Actually, this is perfect. I can just... Okay. Um... He's at two strength, so that's great. I'm going to send you. I'm gonna. We're just doing. We're just going through the motions. I'll stick this here. It's now entrenched at 5, that's good. We'll refresh you. I don't need any more units over here. I have plenty, so these guys... I could damage them more, but I don't think there's any point. <clears throat> oh, my planes can refuel. Yeah, I'm in no hurry. <clears throat> I have all the units right where I need them. <coughs> I'm actually really impressed how well that worked. I took a lot, I took some damage that um, I don't normally plan for, but I did so much damage to the counterattack from the Polish that it, it ripped open the board faster than it normally does. Because once the Polish counterattack is stopped, nothing stops you from uh, just moving into the back. That was nasty, that little trap I set. I just sacrificed a tank and it did a lot of damage. Yeah, it's still not worth attacking. Um, can I attack with one of these? No. Attack with a fighter. Perfect. Thank you. And now I can move up. More infantry. 
Um, I don't really need the scout over here. This guy's going to get de-entrenched. So we are now taking our time. I only have 200 prestige right now. I can actually force a surrender on this one. I just have to dig them out. So um, forcing surrenders is even more important with 25% prestige because I need prestige. So marginal prestige, the benefits of, of, of prestige are even higher when you're looking at it at lower percentages. So the marginal uh, utility I get for each extra unit of prestige means a lot more at this prestige level. A little basic econ concept for you. Uh, I'll use you. Is that four? And I'll move you here. Perfect, it's surrounded, but he's still really dug in. Okay, now I can attack. Then I can do this. Then I can do this. I'm moving it along the river. Good to attack units along the river. And you're done. Now that my artillery is free, I'm going to very quickly conquer this one. That's two artillery shots next turn. <clears throat> my anti tank got a couple of nice hits. I just wish that it hadn't been damaged. I'm more worried about the fact that it took a little damage than uh, anything else that happened here. The process is at four entrenchments, so I can for sure, for sure, force a surrender. Uh, what should I use? Yeah, let's try this. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. Because I only did one damage. Okay. I'll force a surrender next turn. He wasn't fully suppressed. Hit it again. Now it's fully suppressed. And I got three prestige. There we go. My three strength tank takes it. All my planes are back. This is uh this scenario. I should save this. <clears throat> I'll save this here. View battlefield. Everything is conquered. Some lessons to take from that are, oh, you can see I was really hyper-focused on vision. What could my opponent see? Uh, my tactics change on this map because of the scout car. The scout car is able to see four, so you can poke your nose out and see what's in one of the key cities. And you can see there's no mobile units. So this entire northern force was safe to advance if I wanted. And then I used my scout plane to spy out um, <clears throat> what was going on in these locations. And in the process of using the scout plane, I discovered the Polish counterattack. Then I used the movement knowledge that I had of the units that were coming to recognize 
uh, the range that they can attack with. And I was able to set an ambush trap here to damage a tankette <clears throat> with one of my Panzer 1s. And then um, I knew that the, the bomber was capable of reaching all the way down here. And the infantry could see my tank here. So the infantry is telling the bomber, go attack it. So I blocked that route with my fighter bomber and uh, seriously damaged the bomber. That worked out really well. So I didn't actually take... I don't think I took any damage from the air on the ground the entire scenario. The only damage I took was when the fighter attacked my reconnaissance flank. <coughs> and I did that on purpose. I didn't want my fighter to attack my exposed infantry over here. So I, I put the reconnaissance flight within vision range and the AI totally bit on it. And I don't care that my reconnaissance flight takes damage because it's not a unit I plan to use a lot. It's going to get upgraded to Uber Rudel and then I'm going to sell it. So <clears throat> that worked out really well. Um, I was able to move my anti-tank gun pretty freely over here and then it was able to finish off the TKS. That was good. Um, so you can see there was some traps and ambushes. That's actually unusual. When I play this map, I don't normally get that much success. Um, but I kind of use the scout card differently, and it gives you a lot more vision on what's happening. I really like highlighting that. It, I feel like the game, you change it, it changes the way you play the game with a scout card. That, that's good. So let me see uh, the closing argument here. You have successfully captured all of your objectives, and you have dealt the Polish Air Force a significant blow by destroying their air control assets. Between your successes here and the efforts of the Luftwaffe, intelligence believes the Polish Air Force is nearly crippled already. An excellent start, Herr General. September 5th, 1939. Thanks largely to your efforts in crippling the Polish Air Force, our forces in the northern sector have successfully reunited East Prussia with Germany and utterly crushed the so-called Danzig Corridor. In order to maintain control of this area and to continue our advance into Poland, it is vital that you secure several bridges, rail crossings, and cities along the Vistula River. You should expect no resistance from the Polish Air Force, but be prepared for heavy ground resistance from newly mobilized Polish troops. Success here will open up new avenues and drive to Warsaw, but failure could be disastrous. Good luck, Herr Um Let's see what happens. I did not get an SE unit. That is terrible and ruins my day. Uh, first thing you're going to see is I'm going to give normal replacements to literally everything. This is a core part of my strategy to accumulate prestige. Um, I think some people are way too liberal on elite replacements, especially in the early war where it's just easy to get it back. 277 prestige. I have 15 core slots. Can I buy a thing of artillery? Yeah, I will. Okay. <laughs> I'm down to one prestige. Um, and the crazy thing is I am one unit short. I have a normal plan to use an SE unit, and I didn't get one, so that is not good. Um, my artillery is doing pretty well. I mean, this is almost two stars. Um, 49 experience on the anti-tank. So even though he took a couple points of damage, he's doing okay. 44 on the scout. And 42 on this tank. I didn't even intend for one of my tanks to get a lot of experience, and it's at 78. That's interesting. No one-star infantry. That's mostly because I was scared to use them aggressively. However, still, re like 81 XP on my mountain units. It's hard to complain about that. That's, that's really good. One star on my tactical bomber and on my fighter. Um, that's great. And even Rudel, Rudel dominated. I, I, I have to admit that. He absolutely was wrecking things for being deficient. He was pretty effective. Um, I think I will come back. I'll, I'll probably need to end this. I'm getting tired of talking. But there's definitely a lot to talk about with this map. 
Um, and I, I think I'll do a strategic overview and then talk about deployment because this is the first time I get to deploy something. And there's already a wrench in my plans because I don't have an SE unit. So uh, I gotta, I'm going to have to think very carefully about this. Notice I'm at one prestige. What an exciting world I live in <laughs> with no prestige. I finally got like a division worth of artillery and it's not even that great. All right, I'm signing off. Um, please leave any comments about what I'm saying or if you think there's something that could be done better or if you think there's something wrong with my strategic approach or if you think there's additional insights you can add to a scenario, please let me know. I'm all ears for that kind of stuff. I find it interesting to really um, dive into maps and understand them at a big level. And I feel like I unexpectedly described a good different plan that I normally do in the last scenario, and it worked so well, I'm a little shocked. <laughs> it doesn't normally go that smoothly. Um, I've never played the map like that before. So we'll see what new exciting things await with Danzig Corridor. Signing off.